George was excited because he was going to see his very first baseball game. Marco's team, the Cubby Bears, versus the Tiger Babies. Hey, George, throw me the ball. <laughs> Ooh. I just wish I could bat as well as I catch. I still have never hit a home run. You'll do it someday, Marco. And in the meantime, you're still our favorite shortstop. <laughs> Come on, George. I'll introduce you to the coach. Bye, Mommy, Papi. Bye. Bye. Have, have a, a good game. game. Hey, coach. This is my friend George. Put her there, kid. Uh, if I'm going to get good at batting, I need more practice. Would you mind pitching? Hey, who's running this outfit? Nah, it's a good idea. <laughs> what about you, kid? Huh? You want to warm up with the team? Marco, keep your eyes on the ball. <laughs> nice glove work, kid. Some runner. Warm up's over, guys. It's time to play ball. Hello, baseball fans. Looks to be an exciting contest of bears versus babies. It says our scorekeeper has a boo boo and can't make it. George could be scorekeeper. You think you can do it, kid? You have to hang a new number each time a team scores a run. <laughs> then what are you waiting for? Go keep score! <laughs> Play ball! This must be the scoreboard, and these must be the numbers. Pop fly, and that's our first out. Strikes out, number two. <laughs> and it's a sharp single towards second base. Oh, what a catch yeah! by Marco! And toss to first base, and that's the third out. Now the Cubbies are up to bat. By the third inning, George had discovered that sometimes scorekeepers have a lot of free time. Come on, hit a home run. You can do it. And the pitcher winds up. Marco strikes a solid single to right field, and he's safe at first base. <laughs> oh, a strong hit down the right field line. And the right fielder is having a little trouble finding the ball. Run, run, go! Will Marco be able to score from first base? Slide. Time to put up a number. Ah, folks, uh, I gotta clean my glasses because I did not see five runs being scored. Hey, George, that's the wrong number. <laughs> Lower, kid. Huh? <laughs> Uh, George, you're really good at hanging numbers, but now they have to go in the right order. What did that mean? In order? Hungry Monkey never refuses an invitation to eat tacos and burritos, even if he didn't know what they are. The tacos have meat. The burritos are vegetable and cheese wrapped in a tortilla. Buen provecho. 
Yeah. That's my mom, Maritza, and you know my dad, Luis, and my uncle, Felix, and my sister, Cecilia. Marco tells me you're feeling sad about the bandstand, George. We are sad, too. Yeah. We tried playing in the street this morning, but it was too noisy. It's worse than the subway. It was nice to have a place where people could actually hear our music. Hmm. Eating great food, talking about music, it reminded George of the last time he'd been at Pischetti's. <laughs> Do you have a place in mind, George, where people can hear us? Isn't it great? Everyone has come to hear the band. <laughs> Pischetti's might be fine for a man with a violin who could go up to each table to be heard, but it wasn't working for a whole entire band. George and Marco decided to find a place that wasn't crowded or noisy. You live here? Oh, la perro. George really hoped the lobby would work. That way, he could hear the band all the time. So you think if we sound good in here, then the whole band will sound good? <laughs> to George's surprise, they didn't sound good. They sounded sort of muffled. Except to Hundley. George thought they'd sound less muffled at the zoo. There weren't any curtains or carpets. But the lions were a little loud. There were no lions or carpets at the railway station, and the room was big enough for a band. Too big. The high ceiling made it difficult to hear the music. The bridge reminded George of the bandstand. But it was a little too echoey. Okay, so we need a room big enough for the band, but not too big, a high ceiling, but not too high, and no lions or carpets or waiters. Hi, George. And hello, friend of George's. Hola. Are you coming to the opening tonight? Marvels of the Maya. <laughs> it's our biggest archaeological exhibit ever. There'll be food and lots of people. Bring your friends. Lots of people? Was Marco thinking what George was thinking? <laughs> Wait! <laughs> yes? Um, do you think you might want some music tonight? My family has a band. Music? Oh, fantastic idea. Seven o'clock. See you then. <laughs> the subway will take you anywhere in the city. Even to ancient Egypt. Thanks to the museum. This looks great. It looks exactly like the real thing. See? Oh, that? It's a hawk. It warns people that this is the pharaoh's barge. Ah! Ah, <sighs> my history teacher is gonna love it. At least I hope she'll love it. I really need an A. <laughs> There's only one thing left to do. Ah. See if it floats. I guess I could try it out in the bathtub. But in ancient Egypt, boats had to stand up to storms and, and rough seas and, and crocodiles. Hmm. The bathtub probably didn't have any crocodiles. <laughs> but Endless Park did. Statues of crocodiles, that is. 
you're thinking, George. This is the perfect place to try out my boat. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Relax. I'm in fifth grade. I'm prepared. Huh. Ah. Oh, man, this is great. I can see if my boat holds up in bad weather. Ah. She takes a dripping and keeps on, uh, floating. Yeah. My history teacher's gonna be so impressed. I mean, I actually did my homework. I need an A to pass the class. George was sure Steve would get an A. His homework floated really well. Unfortunately, it was floating away. Maybe George could make the boat move towards him. Good thinking. We can make another wave with this rock, and the splash will send it back to shore. Ugh. I killed my homework. <laughs> it's unsinkable. I should get an A+. Plus. <laughs> Catch it! Hey. <laughs> Ow. Whoa! Oh, look at it take those rapids! I am a master barge builder! <laughs> oh, yeah, the boat! I'll probably get an A++ if I can ever catch it! Ah. <laughs> Great, George. We'll cut it off at the pass. But we need something to catch it with. Let's use this. Help me out, will you? Ah, oh, right. Uh oh. George, it's getting away. History homework on the loose. <laughs> I got it! <laughs> Steve's boat was a goner. <laughs> or it would have been if the drain had been draining. But it wasn't. <sighs> Until someone cleaned it. Kid, you can't go down there. Oh. It was an exciting day to be a door dog because he and the doorman were expecting a very exciting delivery. Oh. Ah. Didn't you sleep last night? Oh. Me neither. I was too excited about our big delivery. Oh. Oh, boy, are we glad to see you. Woo! When the doorman said a big delivery, he meant a big delivery. Woo! <laughs> What's in this thing? My Western town. A whole town? Woo! In a box? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's for my train set. I wish I could set it up right now, but I'm on duty. <laughs> yeah, we'll set it up. We love trains. Hey, thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hundley and the doorman had built the most amazing train set ever. There was a future town, a farm town, and even a mountain town. <laughs> the 
the western town goes right there. Relax, Hunley. George and his friends will be very careful. Uh -huh. Sure. Absolutely. It's okay, fella. If you're worried, why don't you stay here and keep an eye on them? You can nap when they're done. Uh -oh. Hundley would not rest until the last piece of track had been laid. Oh. But before Hundley knew it, the West was done. Doesn't it look great? <laughs> Uh-oh, the track is missing a pin. See? There it is! <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry. <gasps> the pin was lost. Don't worry, we'll find it. <laughs> Not only was the pin lost, but the apartment was a wreck. <laughs> I wish there was a quick way to sift through all this dirt. Hey, good idea, George. We can make sifters with our fingers. But sifting is a slow business and boring. It made a sleepy dog even sleepier. Ha! Oh. Oh, I feel like a miner in some old western movie. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling little pin. First we had you, then we lost you. Wish we'd see you once again. First we had you, then we lost you. Wish we'd see you once again. Morning, Deputy. Boop. Big day today with the train tracks joining up. Boop. I wrote a little song all about it. Would you like to hear it? Boop. It goes something like this. Prairieville was neat and clean. Had the best sheriff you've ever seen. His deputy was on the ball. No, he was just inches tall. Way out yonder, further still. Prairieville, Prairieville. Stuck out in Nowhereville. But all that's about to change when the tracks join across the range. When the tracks join across the range. In the city, all kinds of things make music in the spring. Birds. Bees. Bands, and a certain monkey named George. Ah, uh, thanks. It was for the band. <laughs> Hi, guys. Gotta run. It's Mother's Day. <laughs> We're running to get Aunt Margaret a card. See ya. We forgot about Mother's Day. Do you want to buy a card, too? Yes. But Mommy does so much for us. I wish we could do something more for her. <laughs> a party! That's a great idea! Oh, Poppy, could we? Oh, yes! Let's give Mommy a party! We can make all her favorite foods. Okay. But Mommy will see us cooking, and then she'll want to do the cooking, and then it won't be Mommy's party at all. We should cook and have the party at someone else's house. <laughs> oh, great idea, George. Let's do it at our place. Yes, then it will be a surprise. That is very nice of you. Thank you. Come on, let's get moving. Cooking, mommy will wonder where we are. 
So Poppy should say we are on a play date with George and for her to come get us at 5 o'clock. But we may not be ready at 5. So Poppy should take Mommy for a walk on an avenue. And then, when we're ready, we will signal from the window like this. <laughs> and then she should come up, and then we'll yell surprise! Wow. Only now, because there's no time, we should decorate while you go shopping. Okay. <laughs> I'm always thinking. Mommy is going to be so surprised. <gasps> George! Huh? We should make a piñata. George had popped piñatas before, but he'd never built one. This was going to be fun. I once helped my uncle make one. I think I remember how. First, you blow up a balloon. Second, you mix glue and water. Then you dip strips of newspaper in it to make paper mache, like this. Ooh. Ah. Then you cover the balloon with the paper mache. Ah, yeah. We have to make a donkey piñata because that's the only kind I know how to make. <laughs> Avocados, habanero chiles, onions, eggs, sugar, frijoles negros, queso, tomatoes. We're done. Oh, hot diggity. Plenty of time to spare. Maybe now our piñata is dry enough to decorate. Ugh. Ah. I forgot. It takes a long time for paper mache to dry. Sometimes days. Ah! Ooh! Ah! If the piñata isn't dry when we hang it, it will just fall apart. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Maybe there was another way to make a piñata. It had to be something you could put treats in and be made of paper that could burst open with a stick. Doesn't look much like a piñata. Ah. 